Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, this is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com and today this is a live class that we're teaching right now how to do the Ken Burns effect and uh, we're going to accomplish all of this using nothing more than what comes with a Mac, primarily iMovie. So what this is, for those of you who are familiar with Ken Burns, he is a filmmaker of course from Hollywood, uh, actually not in Hollywood, actually he lives in the Northeast and he makes these documentaries and his documentaries all work kind of the same way he'll have a lot of old photos typically and he'll start wide and maybe slowly zoom in on someone's face and while he's doing this there's narration there's music occasionally there's titles and everything that he does in his films you can do with what comes with your Mac so I'm gonna be teaching you how to do this now to create this here's what you're gonna need uh, other than obviously a Mac you're going to need your photos. You're going to need some sort of a piece of music that you want in the background, presuming you do want music. Um, just to avoid any copyright issues, I'm going to be using some generic music. But if you can get it in iTunes, you can use it. So whether it's something you burn from a CD or something that you buy through the iTunes store, if, as long as you can get it into iTunes, you're good to go. What we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to do all this, and uh, we do have quite a few people. What happened was we had a, a, a 10 a.m., I'm sorry, 11 a.m. class. This is the 5 p.m. class that we're recording right now, and then uh, we also have a 9 o'clock class. What happened was everyone who was taking the 9 o'clock class, which was not very many people, all switched to the 5 o'clock class. So this one uh, is going to definitely have the most questions. So what we'll do is I'll go through everything, and then at the end I have plenty of time to stick around, and we'll try to get all of your questions answered. So for now, you can kind of just uh, sit back and relax. Um, so here we go. So as you can see here, I have opened up iMovie. Okay, this is the 2011 version of uh, iMovie, a part of iLife 11. And the first thing I'm going to recommend that you do is if you look here on the left-hand side of my screen, you see these two arrows. Well, what that's going to do is we have, we have a total of three different uh, spaces here. Okay, we have the project space, we have your files, and then we have the preview. I recommend clicking on this button because it's going to switch them. Because you really want your project space to have the most. Okay, now in doing the Ken Burns effect, you can add video if you want. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm using a bunch of photos that I, uh, one of my little side gigs is I work with a magazine. And uh, I took a bunch of the photos that they had in the issue and to slap them together into an album, so we're going to be using those today. So you want your photos to already be in the application iPhoto. You want to have them somewhat organized, and by that I mean preferably in an album or an event, however you prefer. And uh, like I said, just have your music in uh, iTunes and we're good to go. So let's begin here. Now the vast majority of your tools are located over here on the left, on the right hand side, sorry, of the screen. Okay, this first tab right here, which I'm just going to go over what they are and then we can come back and I'll teach you how to use them one by one. The first tab here is music, which is pretty easy to figure out considering it's a music note. The next, which is the one we're about to go into, is the photo browser and that connects right in with iPhoto. So if you have your photos organized and available in iPhoto, you'll be good to go. The T stands for titles. So if you want to have like an introductory title or scrolling credits at the end, you can use the titles. This next icon here, I think that they were trying to go for like a curtain, it's transitions. So if I want to crossfade between one photo to another or get maybe a little more funky and, you know, flash to a color or something like that, that's where I would go. The globe one here at the very end, honestly, no one uses it. Um, it, it was kind of a cheesy concept from the beginning. Um, but it allows you to have a globe, basically, and it's as though if you're doing like a, say you're doing a road trip, you can make it look like point A to point B, and it has the line traveling on the map with an arrow. It's, it's really, really cheesy. So we're going to start with our content right off the bat. And to do that, we're going to click here on the camera and go into Photos. So as you can see here, I have access to my entire iPhoto library. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here. I created a album called iMovie Examples. Now I could drag these one at a time or I can select all of them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to very simply, you know, if you've seen the new to Mac class, you know the biggest concept of the Mac is this really simple idea of drag and drop. 
I have content in one area, I want it to go in another, so I should just be able to simply drag it and drop it there, and that's how we're going to do it. So, little trick to select all of these images, if on your keyboard, if you hit Command and the letter A, by the way, that is the universal command for select all. See how they're all highlighted now? Well, I can now take any one of them and drag and drop them right here into my project space. And if you actually look, you can see that it does say the number, I think that says 28. My contacts are getting old. Now, your computer is going to automatically try to add the Ken Burns effect, but it's not going to really know what it's looking at. So it's going to start zooming in and out of photos, panning them, and somewhat successfully, but you're going to probably want to do a little bit more touch-up work. Plus, I'm going to show you how to change things like how long each shot uh, is on for, and all of that. So what you can see here is that if I use my cursor and I scroll to the very beginning, one of the big keys you're going to want to be aware of on your keyboard is anytime you have your cursor down here in the bottom, okay, you see how that little line traces? It's showing me where I'm at in the video. Anytime I want to see what it looks like, I can just hit the space bar and it will play. Sorry. Okay, so on that shot you can see it's slowly pulling out, slowly pushing in. Okay. So it's already looking like we've done work on it when we in fact actually haven't. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how to move around shots and many of you have already guessed it, it's all drag and drop. So let's say I have this really nice sunset shot right here, okay? And maybe I want that to be the first shot in the video. Well, all I have to do is click on it, drag it, and I can drop it to the number one position. And there you go, it's first, okay? So you can really play with this, get the shots that you want in order, however you want to however you want to do it. So let's take a couple of these. I'm trying to think of like a dummy storyline in my head. I'm going to take these two shots and move them. Now the way that you move two shots is the same way you m move more than one item in any part of the computer. You'd hold the command key, click on one, click on the other while still holding down the command key. And now when I go to drag one, I'm actually dragging both of them. So let's just kind of nudge it over here. You can see them. it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of kind of placing it in the right area. Okay. But the problem is a lot of these shots are not, I mean, like this shot here should really be focusing on this woman's face, not so much the center of the photo. So one of the things we're about to go over is how to tweak all the camera movements. Now, a lot of what I'm showing you here, you can partially accomplish in iPhoto. There is actually something called the Ken Burns effect, but it does not allow you to add narration and it does not allow you to control the camera movements. And when we're done with this, you'll see that you do have that ability when you do it in iMovie. It takes longer, but the final product is a hell of a lot better too. So now what I think we're going to go over, let's go over how to create the Ken Burns effect. Now one of the things you may have noticed is that when I put my cursor here over any clip, there's a teeny tiny blue gear that appears at the bottom left corner of the clip. You can see here as I move it, it appears on each shot. So put it on the shot that you want to adjust and let's use this woman here as the example. And let's, for this shot, let's make it start somewhat close on her face and then pull back, okay? So to do this, all we're gonna do is click on the gear and you can see we get a little menu here of options. The first is Precision Editor, which we don't really need to go over because it's frankly pretty much unnecessary, especially in what we're doing here today. Clip Adjustments, Video Adjustments, and Cropping, Ken Burns, and Rotation. Well, you can pretty much guess it's this last option right here. So now if we go up to our preview window here, you'll see here that there are two boxes around the subject. There's a red box that has the word End at the bottom left, and a green box with the word start. So what you can do is take the corner of the green box, because that's where the shot is going to be, and we can drag it so that it's a little bit tighter, okay? And if you want to move the shot, see how when I'm, my cursor is in the middle, it turns into this little hand? Well, you can grab it and move it up a little bit, okay? 
So this is going to be a pretty big movement to go from here to here. So let's just end the shot a little bit more delicately. When you add the Ken Burns effect, the trick is not to make it too, 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 too dramatic. Okay, it's so much better if it's subtle. Okay, so now what you can see here is if I click back inside the green box, the shot is going to start here, and when it's done, it's going to end here. So you can see kind of the frame that you're looking at. Let's just click done, and I'll show you how it works. Now, for those of you who have used Final Cut Pro in the past, especially older versions of Final Cut Pro, not the current one, you know that one of the things that editors hate is rendering, and that's where it's piecing together the clip. There is no rendering with this. It is all instant, so you don't have to wait. So let's see how that shot works. I'll just start it from the beginning. See that? Like Just that little subtle movement gives it some character. Let's do it for this guy here now, too, in, uh, in, the, in the next shot. Now, one of the things to be careful about in editing is you don't want the same kind of shot every single time. So, for example, in this one, we started close and ended wide. In this next one, just to mix it up, let's start wide and zoom in. So to do this, we're going to go right back to the gear, cropping Ken Burns in rotation. Okay, so you can see this is the current shot that it has, but this time... What I just say we we're going to do, we're going to start wide. Okay, we're going to start wide. So let's just kind of adjust the shot. And again, to make it bigger, we're going to put the cursor at the bottom left corner and just drag it out. Okay. And the end shot. We can end right there. Okay. By the way, one trick I want to tell you right off the bat, when you're doing the Ken Burns effect, and especially when you're shooting the photos, don't shoot them uh, in portrait mode, otherwise known as vertically. Because the problem is, is it really, you, you don't have the ability. If you've seen like on the news, when they show a video of someone shot with their phone, if they shoot it vertically, I mean like you can see two inches of it because there's black bars on either side. So you really want to get into the habit of trying to shoot all of your photos in landscape mode, okay, wide. So we hit done. And now let's see how these two shots play off of each other. Hit the space bar to play. Okay. Cool. So it's looking good already. Next thing I want to do is I want to show you how to add titles. Okay. So to add titles, we're going back right here to where I said all the major tools are that we're going to use. There's only really one that we're going to use that's not located there. And we're going to go here to T for titles. Now, the titles are really interesting because some of them are animated and some of them you can put over video and others you have to have a background. Now, the a lot of them these days are, um, they are moving. And the way you can tell is if you just hover your cursor over any of them, it'll show you if it moves. So for example, this one here, Overlap, might be a little hard for some of you to see. This one, that, that title always reminds me for some reason of uh, Ocean's Eleven. I think they had some sort of titles like that. Four corners here, it'll change it different colors in the four different corners of the screen. I just think of Austin Powers when I see that. If you want at the end, scrolling credits, those are right here. My favorite probably is pull focus, which is down here at the bottom right. So what that'll do is it'll take your shot. Your shot still stays in the image, but then what it's going to do is it's going to blur it, and you're going to see the text come through, and then it's going to fade back out. So let's say, let's see, I'm, I'm putting together in my head a storyline. Um, let's take this shot here, and let's move it right here. And let's have this be our title. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a little Ken Burns effect so I can just change the movement because I didn't like the way it was. Okay, I'm going to make it really, really subtle. Okay. All right. So the way you add a title uh, in the case of adding it onto a clip is just like what we did before. You're going to drag it and you're going to drop it on top. See how it turns blue? I'm holding down just now so you can see. See how the clip there turns blue? You're going to let go, and there you go. So now we can just type in our text, and I'm just going to say 
family vacation to Key West, Florida. Now, if you hate that font, which I do, if you look up here at the top left of the preview window, there's a little box that says show fonts. So if you want, you can go through here and you can change whatever you font, whatever font you want. And if you want to really get funky, you can actually click here and open up your system font panel and choose any font in the computer. Okay, for this, let's um, ah, let's stay with Futura. Now you can also, as if you see over here, you can change the color of the text. All right, I think I'm going to keep it on white. And finally, over here, you have a, a different options, one through nine, and this is just the size of that text. So I think I'll keep it right in the middle, right around six. And when you're done, you can just simply click done. All right, so now let's see how that shot looks right now. I'll go back one shot so you can see it preview in. Now one problem with that shot is that the shot was so fast when you added the title that you didn't really get to see the image itself. So what I actually want to do is I'm going to, I was going to teach you this later, but I'm, I think I'm going to do it right now. So I want to teach you how to change the timing of a clip because right now you may have noticed if you put your cursor over any of these clips, if you look here by where my cursor is, you see how it says 4S, that's 4 seconds. So some of these shots you might want to be longer. Some of them you might want to be shorter. So let me show you how to do that right now. Let's do this image right here as the example. We're going to click on the gear and we're going to go to clip adjustments. And it's very simple. You see it right here. It says duration currently is four seconds. We're just going to type in manually 10 seconds. Now be sure not to click this unless you really want to. If I check this box, it's going to make every single image 10 seconds long. Okay, so now what it's done is it has made that clip 10 seconds, but it's also made the title 10 seconds, and I don't want that. I only want the, the actual title to be there for probably about four or five. So the way you do it is very simple. You can use either side of it, but all you're going to do is you're going to click and drag it in, and you can actually see as I'm doing that, the timer is counting down. So right now it's at seven seconds, and let's do it right there at five. Now, currently it comes in right here at the very beginning of the clip. Maybe I want to see the photo first, which is what I usually do. So all you have to do to move it is just click it and just move it over a little bit. I'm going to bump it right to the center. So now this is how that clip works. And remember, if any of you here have questions, write them down, and then we will come back at the end and go over all of them. So now we see the photo. There's very subtle movement. The title comes in. The title goes out. And you can still see the photo, and then we go to the next image. Okay? So the idea about editing is editing does take a lot of work, but when it's done, you shouldn't really see it. It should just blend in, it should just help you tell the story. And that's what we're doing here. So the next thing I'm going to teach you is how to add your own voiceover. Now, you can technically use the microphone that comes built into your computer. For those of you who have written uh, and said you know that you really like the that the audio is really really clear uh, on the both the live classes and the videos that we pre-recorded, we get questions all the time. What kind of a microphone are you using? Well, microphones can go up to ten thousand dollars a piece. Believe it or not, the one that I'm using right now is a hundred dollars, and it's uh, called the Blue Snowball. And uh, if you're interested in getting one. Shoot me an email. I'll be happy to send you a link to where you can get one at a really low cost. You might even be able to get them for less than 100 now. Uh, my email, by the way, david at pcclassesonline.com. So let's go over how to add voiceover. Now, this is going to be an experience because I don't have a script written. I'm going to purely improv this. So wish me luck and have really, really low expectations. This is the one exception to where we're going to, instead of going over here, for tools, we're going to go right here to the dead center of the screen. There's a little icon here, which looks like a microphone, called Record a, vo a VoiceOver. We're going to click on it. And you're going to see here that it's saying Record From, and it currently says Built-in Microphone. Well, I'm going to change that and go to Blue Snowball. That's what I'm using right now. And you can see my voice is showing up here in the little meter. 
So depending on how your voice comes across, you can see mine right now staying pretty much in the green the whole time. That's what you want. If you see something crazy like this where it's just peeking out in red, it's going to sound horrible when you record it. So you really want to make sure that it's down at a pretty good volume. 68% for me seems to be pretty good. Noise reduction right here is an option. And what it will do is basically try to um, drone out any background noise. So say there's a lawnmower in the background, uh, it'll attempt to get rid of it. It doesn't always work great, but you can use it if you want. Okay. Next here is voice enhancement. This is especially good if you have a deep voice. Um, uh, that's at least what I found. But it gives your voice that presence. I don't know how to describe it better than that. And then finally we have this other option here which is play project audio while recording. Now you may have noticed that I've taught you how to do this so far and we have not yet added the music. Normally when I'm making these kind of projects, music is one of the first things I add. Here's the key thing. If you record your voice while the computer is playing the audio, the, the background music, it's going to double record it and you're going to get really bad distortion. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Make sure you use headphones. That's the only thing. So I'm not going to do project audio, uh, play project audio because A, I haven't added the music, but I don't have my headphones handy. So all you have to do to record is put your cursor where you want your audio to come in. Okay, now some people want to come in right at the way at the very beginning. Others might want to give it a little bit of an intro before they, uh, before they actually come in. The way it's going to work when it's done is it's going to fade down the music and fade up my vocals. Now when you're done, all you have to do is tap the space bar and it'll finish recording. And when you do click to, to initially start the recording, it's going to give you a little countdown. So it's going to give you, I think it's a five second countdown. Uh, or is it three? I think it's three. Sorry. So let's improv something, put it together. And like I said, when I'm done, I'm just going to tap the space bar and it's going to stop recording. So if you screw up, you can do this many times. God, what the hell am I going to say? Okay, let's try it out. In the summer of 2011, our family took a trip and experience theater, drama, beautiful locations, sunny beaches, and had a lot of memories to add to our experience. This is our family vacation to Key West, Florida. That was horrible. I know. It's repetitive. I don't really think well on the fly. <laughs> so the idea, though, is that you can see when I hit the space bar, I added this purple bar here at the very bottom. And that purple bar is my voiceover. Now anytime uh, this is a really good thing to go over. Let's say you make a mistake and you screw it up, you want to do it over again. The universal command for undo, and this does not just apply to iMovie, this applies to pretty much the whole computer, is command Z. So if I hit command Z, I believe that does apply to recording. Yep, see it gets rid of the clip. You can, if you want to redo, so if I undo it and then decide, ooh, I do want that, uh, if you just add the shift key in, so command shift Z, it will redo or undo your undo. That made sense, right? No. Moving on. So I have my audio here. Okay, let's add just a little bit more just so we have something a little bit more polished. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to think of something. All right, I'm just going to click and record a little bit here. We woke up every morning to the lovely sound of seagulls flying by. The beaches were warm and the sand was soft on our feet. Oops, sorry. You know what I did? <laughs> I, I was, I, I guess mentally I, I knew I was going to screw up, so I hit the escape key instead. Let's try that again. Each morning we were greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. The song, the sand, you get the idea. See, I can't speak. It's too late in the day. It's five o'clock. Anyways, let's pretend that that's all of the audio for the clip. This is going to be really dreadful when it's done. Okay. So we've recorded our audio. Now let's go and add the music. Now, like I said, to get music into your project, all you need is iTunes. It doesn't matter how you get your music into iTunes, whether it's through ripping a CD or from 
purchasing it through the iTunes store or any other method. What we're going to do is go back to our toolbar over here on the right hand side, click on the music note. Okay, now I've got to go and get, let's see here. Um, I'm going to be using some generic music that comes with the computer. I'm trying to find it here. And if you want to go through here, I mean, this list that you're seeing here would be the exact same thing that you would see in iTunes. And so if you want to preview it, what you can do is you can click on it and hit the play button here. Let's go to see what. Let's see how this one sounds. Perfect. Okay. So if I want to add the music, all I have to do is click it, drag it, and drop it at the beginning of the project. And that green bar that you see represents the music. So just in what we've done now, I want you to see what we've created. So, and, and obviously my vocals don't help, but let's hit the space bar and see how it looks. In the summer of 2011, our family took a trip and experienced theater, drama, beautiful locations, sunny beaches, and had a lot of memories to add to our experience. This is our family vacation to Key West, Florida. Each morning we were greeted so by... So you get the idea here of how it's starting to all come together. Now, my vocals were a little low in that, so we can probably want to do a little boost. The way to do that is very similar to the way we added the Ken Burns effect. If you notice here the purple clip, you see that on the very left-hand side, there is a gear. And all we have to do is click here on uh, audio adjustments. You can see my volume is currently at 100%. Let's just move it up to 133. Okay, and when we hit done, you'll hear that it should be a, a bigger difference. In the summer of 2011, our family took a trip and experienced theater, drama. So a lot better. Okay, you want the you really want to have the uh, music fade pretty far down and your audio go way up when you're when you're doing narration. So let's go over a couple other things here. We want to go over. I want to go over transitions with you. So right now, every shot when it's done, it cuts to the next shot. And the funny thing is it still looks pretty good, but it'll really help your video flow if you have some nice transitions. Now, it can be really easy to get what I call transition happy, where you go into these crazy funky ones. Um, try to keep it a little bit more calm, unless that's really what you want to do. So the way you add a transition is very simple. We go over here to the right-hand side of the screen, and you see this little icon here. Again, it looks like a little bit like a curtain, that's what I think it is. This will show you all the different uh, all the different transitions. So if you want to see what they look like, you can just kind of put your cursor over, and it'll give you a little preview. And the further you go down the list, the more funky they get. And it's okay to do a couple of them. It's just when you're doing it for every other shot that it can start to get really annoying and uh, looks like you're just trying to show off. The one I use a lot of more than anything is Cross Dissolve and Cross Blur, but uh, for the most part, Cross Dissolve. So all you have to do to add a transition is just click it, drag it, and you're going to drop it in between the two shots. So let's say I do this first shot here, okay, in between the first shot and the second shot. You see when I leave, I'm, I'm holding my cursor down so you can see this. You see the green vertical bar? Well, that's just showing me exactly where it's going to be placed. So let's let go, and it's added a transition. And now it looks like this. In the summer. Okay. Now you can change the timing of your transitions if you like. To do that, all you have to do is click on the actual transition and you see how it says 0 0.4 seconds? Well, look what we got right below it. It's a gear. So we can go here under transition adjustments. And sometimes you want, and watch out, because by default it does check all of them. So you might want to uncheck that. Sometimes you want to really uh, drag out a transition. Um, I mean that in a good way. So let's try making this transition two seconds long. And you'll see, you know, just by changing the transition times, you can kind of change the whole mood. It just, it slows it down. It gives it a little bit more time to, uh, time for the, the viewer to absorb what they're looking at.
In the summer of 2011, our family took a trip. Trips. Easy. Let's do another one here, just as an example. Let's do uh, cross dissolve. All right, and let's put it right here between these two clips. So we're going to take cross dissolve, drag it, and drop it right between the two shots. And just like that. It's pretty fast, yeah. Let's make it a little bit longer. Transition adjustments. And let's go to one second. You know, it's a fine thing. I didn't even realize that. I just added cross dissolve by... That's how long I've been doing this. Cross blur. Sorry. I thought that looked a little weird. There we go. So it gave it a little bit of character without really distracting from the subject matter. And you can do this all day long. I mean, you can really get into it and uh, just make your project come alive. Let me show you a couple other things here. I'm going to use this guy here as an example. So one of the things you can do is you can add different effects to change, in many ways, to change the mood of the actual image. And to do this, you're going to click on the gear. And one of the things you may have seen earlier was that you have this thing here called video adjustments. Okay, now clip adjustments and video adjustments are very similar, um, but uh, a little bit different. So with this, what I can do is I can change the exposure. I can make it lighter or darker. This image has been overly photoshopped. Uh, you can change the saturation, the contrast, brightness, or even the white balance. Probably even better, though, for this one is going to be the clip. Uh, what they call it here? They call it the clip inspector, I believe. So here, you can see I can click where it says video effect. And watch this. I get my window here flips over, and I can see all these different little features that I can add um, to make it look completely different. For example, let's say I don't want this guy to be on the right. I want him to be on the left. Well, one of the options here is I can flip the image. See that? Go from that to that. Now, as you move your cursor, you're going to see what the clip looks like. I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to mute the computer audio so that I can play it just by hitting the space bar. And what it's going to do is it's going to just keep the looping. You're greeted by the clip. songs of seagulls So when you're in the uh, when you're choosing the a video effect, you're greeted by the space bar just to see it over and over nearby. The setting we were Raster greeted by the song effect of seagulls you can make it look cartoony. The setting we were greeted by the song make it look like aged film. Nearby. This is an effect the something we were greeted by the songs of film seagulls rain. flying nearby. The setting we were greeted by the song of seagulls flying nearby. I'm really the setting we were greeted by the songs of seagulls there. flying nearby. Day into the night, which really just adds kind by of the a lot of blues to seagulls it. flying nearby. You can give it a glow, we greeted by the songs dream of seagulls effect. flying nearby. Romantic, something we were greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. Vignette where it's going to fade all the edges. greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. Bleach bypass. The something we were greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. The something we were greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. Black and white. So if you want to make your color video, greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. You can do that. The something we were greeted by the songs of seagulls flying nearby. The something we were greeted by the songs of seagulls okay. flying. So that's how you add those different effects to the different shots. Let's see here. We went over music. We went over photos. Went over that. Uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about is um, what do you want to do with this video when you're done? Because a lot of you are going to want to share it with your friends and family members. And the biggest thing most people want to do is they want to burn it to a DVD. Um, the easiest way to do this, there's two, there's two methods, that, there's many methods, but I'll recommend two. One way you can do it with absolutely no additional software is to use a piece of software that comes with your Mac called iDVD. And the way you do it is if you look here at the very top window where I have all my menu items, the third to the final item is share. And you can see here, these are all the different things you can do with your project. You can send it to the, you can use the media browser to choose what size it is. You can send it to iTunes. iDVD, the one I was just talking about, is right here. If you have a YouTube account, you can share it to YouTube. If you have a Facebook account, you can upload it directly to Facebook. Same goes for Vimeo, CNN iReport, or you have these three options here to export the movie as a file. Okay. So you can really do whatever you want. If you do iDVD, it's going to launch you into a whole brand new program. It's going to take your video so that it's already there, but it's going to walk you through creating uh, an actual DVD that you'll be able to play on a DVD player. 
and uh, it'll have menus. You can have a slideshow if you want, or you can just have it simply play. Now, that's one method to do it. My preferred method is to use a third-party piece of software called Toast. And Toast, let's see if I can find it here. I don't have it handy here, although it's probably right in front of me. Toast is a little application. I think it's $100 now. It may have come down in price. I'm not totally sure about that. We can actually check just by going in. I think they have it in the App Store these days. And there's like 50 different versions of Toast. Just get the most basic one. I think I have Toast Titanium. I don't. They do not have it. So you have to get it through their website. You can just Google Toast for Mac and it will pop right up. Um, but that is a much more simple program where you just take the file and just drag it in and say burn and it will just burn it to a DVD. Very, very simple. Um, and if anyone has any specific questions on that, we can go over that at the very, very end of the class. Let me go through my notes here and see if there's anything here that I missed. I've gone through a lot in a fairly quick amount of time. Um, clip adjustments went over, video adjustments we went over, cropping converts. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, the see the little bar here at the bottom? of my screen, how it says 5S. What that means is each time you see a box here, that box represents five seconds of time. So in other words, if I move it to the left, okay, now each box that you see here represents one second in time. In this, hence why it has the same over here. Okay. So if you're working with a lot of images and you want to really be able to see your whole project, you might want to just pull all the way to the to the right hand side and that way you can see really everything. In this case this video project is so short that you don't really have to worry about that. So that's a lot of it. Um, another thing you can do here is if you want to preview it in full screen, if you look here at the bottom left, you'll see here uh, there's two different play buttons. The one on the left will play it full screen. If you want to get out of it just hit the escape key. So In the summer of 2011, our family took a trip and experienced the theater, drama, beautiful locations, it's so much better sunny beaches, it. script out ahead of time. And finally over here on the right hand side, it'll just play it from the beginning on your regular desktop. It's the same thing as hitting the space bar. I will go over and show you real quickly what the globe is. Like I said, it's very, it's very, very cheesy. Um, but if I wanted to say like, oh, we started off here and we ended here, what you do is you take this graphic and plop it in and it's going to ask you where's your start point, where's your destination, and it'll create a little animated globe for you. So it's saying, okay, so I guess we're starting in Brewster, Massachusetts, and we're going to end location in Key West. And so you can see it starts off. Cheesy, but anyways, that's how you do it. Oh, one thing I didn't go over was how to do a title when you don't have a background. So let's say instead of doing all of this cheesy globe stuff, by the way, if you want to delete any of these clips, literally all you do is click on it and hit the delete key. That's literally all you do. So let's say I take I want to take this centered title here. Okay, and I want to make that the very first thing you see. All you have to do is instead of dragging it onto a clip, just drag it to the left of a clip. See how I have that vertical green bar again? When I let go, I can choose my background if I want like an animated background. Or if you want, you can just go with a black background. I'll just go with black. Let's see. I'll just put the date, okay? You get the idea. All right, everyone, we've gone through a lot of stuff today, and I'm sure there are questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video 
that is being recorded right now. So for those of you who are watching this after uh, we've done this live, uh, the video is going to end. For those of you who are here, I'm going to start taking questions from you. So we'll cut out the video now.